It's an infinite farm system, fueled infinitely by bamboo. We are in 114, and this cactus and kelp farm is going to keep going for as long as you can and give you so much XP, you're not going to know what to do with it all. I'll show you how right now. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, depending on what time you're watching this next episode from me, Abamaz, in my farm tutorial series. And I am doing one that was kind of requested, kind of suggested by a number of people, which is a multiple farm using the sweeper system. So we're using a farm here to do cactus and to do kelp and all to be fueled infinitely through bamboo. Yes, we are in 114, or at least we're in the snapshot, and it works beautifully. Look at that. We have got a sweeper arm banging across there taking out all of that lovely bamboo to act as a fuel so as we can burn off all of the cactus and all of the kelp and get the lovely experience out of those furnaces as a result of it. It's a really fun system. I'm going to show you how to make it, but before I do, you need to know you need a lot, lot, lot of glass. You need a lot of wood. I'm not going to do a full inventory system because it actually depends on how big you want to make it, but you need quite a lot of stuff for this. This is more fun than practical. I am going to warn you, but it is a lot of fun. I look forward to seeing what you think about it in the comments and let's crack on. So this has got quite a big footprint, but it is definitely worth it. If you look at the green square there, it is 24 across by 23 down. And if you look at the blue squares or blue rectangles, they are 22 by 10. And if you look at the red rectangles, they are 23 by 10 and they are all separated by two blocks. Each of these sections is going to be dedicated to a different thing and then we're going to bring it all together with a collection smelting system. It's all very exciting and I hope it goes right. Now, like I said before, if we were to do this block for block, the entire video would last about a gazillion hours. So we are not going to do that. But what we are going to do is we're going to set ourselves up. We're going to do the one in the middle first. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to shove in a chest there and a chest there. And then we're going to come along to the other side and we're going to shove in a chest there and a chest there. And you should see we are one block in from each side. You can see that. That's beautiful. And then we're going to come in behind the chest and we're going to shift click into that chest there and shift click again into the chest. We're then going to come across one, two, three, four, five. So all together, we've got seven hoppers running into that chest. We're going to do the same on this side. We're going to come in one in there, one in there, and then another seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. You'll notice there is a gap of two, which is really important, between the two lots of chests. Now what we're going to do is we've got to get some blocks. So we're going to completely block out the whole of this platform. So I'll be back when I've done that. So there we've got an entire platform, which is going to be the floor. And you'll notice we've gone across the two rectangles. So it's like one big platform and now what we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves some rails and we want to run rails across all of these hoppers using shift click there we go uh, we also need to put silly me we need to put one in there we need to put two in there and there and one in this corner just there as well whoopsie right so then we're going to turn the corner here like that and then we're going to take that out and we're going to put in a block of redstone and we're going to put one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're going to put in another block of redstone right there. And we're going to put one, two, three. And then we're going to turn the corner. And we're going to come straight back down again. But it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we're going to take that out. We're going to put in some redstone. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to change one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Take out redstone and then put in another five powered rails. One, two, three, four, five. And you're going to carry on doing this pattern until you have completely got it all the way round to here. And it joins up with that track there. That's what you're looking for. I'll be back when I've done that. So there you've got a set of rails on the left hand side that performs a circuit. My error, four gap in the middle, not two. I don't know what I was talking about. I meant these two here, but there should also be two the either side. So you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hoppers on each side. If you've not got seven hoppers on each side, you made the same mistake I did. Put that right and we'll all be happy and we can go on with what we're trying to build. Now duplicate this 
on the other side and you should have lines going literally next to each other. There we go, plenty of rails. Now where you put the powered rails in isn't really that important as long as you've got sufficient power to make sure that your mine carts are gonna be running around and around. Now we're gonna shove a wall around the outside here and I'm gonna use logs to make the wall and it's gonna be a couple high all the way around like this and another layer as well. Like that, it comes out beyond that to these uh, chests and then keep going all the way along. Leave a bit of a gap so you can get your mine carts cracking on when you actually do, you're not doing that just yet. Bring that up like that and keep that going all the way around to high. Because what we're gonna be doing is on top of these rails, um, we're gonna be putting some dirt blocks. So where's me dirt, there's me dirt. So on top of the rails, we're gonna be putting a load of dirt blocks, literally on top of the rails, so like that. So if you can see, we've got this one being the first one. Leave this rail completely open, the entire last leg. But on top of that rail, we're gonna be putting dirt all the way along, like this, until we get to the other side, which is that one there. And that dirt is gonna be carrying on all the way along, right the way along to that block there. I couldn't even do it then, to that block there, but we are gonna leave a gap in the middle. And the gap in the middle we're gonna leave is right here. So we're gonna have a dirt block there and a dirt block there, but we're not gonna have dirt blocks in between these two sections. So I'm just gonna fill in the wall and the dirt blocks and I'll be back in just a minute. So we are gonna leave it there, this particular section for now. You can see we've done the dirt all the way across and then we've got a few bits of wood in the middle there and it is trimmed all the way around with three high logs and we've just put some steps underneath those two there so as those chests will actually open should we ever need to access them. This gap is here purely at the moment for us to be able to lob minecarts on. We are not gonna keep it open, it will eventually close up. So we're gonna to come to this side now because we need to start building up the base of this one as well. And what I want you to do is I want you to come in and with a fence post, I want you to come to right into the corner of where you've marked out your markings. And I want you to, from that corner, come in one and then one again and shove a fence post. And then every other one, shove a fence post like this. No more hard than that and you should find that you're exactly the same kind of in one and in one. And then what I want you to do is I want you to come between the two fence posts, I want you to go forward one block and then knock a pen fence post in there and then leave a gap and a fence post, leave a gap, fence post, leave a gap, fence post. And then when you've done that entire row, come between those two fence posts, go forward one and then another one, leave a gap, fence post, leave a gap, fence post, leave a gap, fence post. Okay, so you get the idea and you're gonna do this all the way down and what you'll also find is this fence post here there will be one two three gap and then another fence post one two three gap fence post one two three fence post one two three fence post and you're going to carry that on until you've got at this whole side here you've got one two three four gap okay one two three four gap and what you'll find you've also got on this side is two gap between the kind of the inside ones as well. So the closest fence post will be two away from this base edge and the others will be four away. And then, once you've done that, on top of these fence posts, put a block of sand. Each, not, not next to it, on it. Each and every fence post, a block of sand. And once I've done all of that, I shall be back. And what you've got there is a field full of sand lollipops. Not particularly tasty, a little bit scratchy on the old tongue, but actually very, very useful. We are now going to get a bit of cactus and we're going to put a cactus on top of each and every one. Now, if you saw my cactus farm tutorial uh, that I released a couple of weeks ago as of the release date of this video, you will see that the pattern of growth on this particular farm is slightly different to that that I put on the previous farm. Now the reason for that is I've discovered that this actually has a slightly more efficient um, way of collecting the cactus. What happens with the other one where we've basically got cactus uh, kind of a block away from each other in every direction, not just across ways. When the sweeper comes across, it's not uncommon for the cactuses to be swept 
into other cactuses, which obviously means you lose uh, a lot of your yield, and that's no good to anybody, is it? So this actually reduces that. It doesn't remove it completely, but it does reduce it because the cactuses have got a lot further to go uh, before they hit another cactus when they're being swept across from that direction and as a result you end up getting more cactuses for your money and that's obviously something that you want with a cactus farm so we've got all of those cactuses put on there like that or cacti <laughs> sorry put on there like that so then what we're going to do is we're going to count one two three four five six seven and then the next one we're going to go two one two three four five six seven and the next one to go one two three two three four five six seven and eight and there you go so what i want you to do now is i want you to take out all of this block whatever block it is you're building on whether it's grass or stone or whatever it might be and take it out from underneath the fence posts in exactly this way so this row here 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 blah 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 is just one deep these ones are two deep and these ones are three deep take all of those out and i'll be back with you in a minute so we have got a triple level tray that goes one and then two and then three deep and then what i want you to do is i want you to dig out this bit underneath the edge of your farm look how this green wall represents the edge wall of your farm all the way to the end there and then i want you to do a little bit more strategic digging so one block out there then count two three four five six and seven and then two two three four five six and seven and then three two three four five six and seven look that brings you to there so eight would be right there but we don't want to do eight we want to do seven again and then we're going to go three keep yourself your little bit of uh, underside there it doesn't matter so that's three and coming up so that's just seven hang on i've lost my count now one two three four five six seven that's right and then come out another six that's one two three four five and six and then dig up to the top because you want to know where that top bit is for now so if we then come out of this hole along here and out there you go you can get out without ladders you should have a hole just about here and that is perfect then get yourself some glass where's me glass there's me glass get yourself some glass and shove glass around that hole like that you're also going to want a sign where is the signs oops there you've got all the different colored signs now as a result of it being in 114 which is brilliant and then come down into your hole and then you've got this is going to be the middle of your water elevator so you want basically this to not have any water to come onto it that one right there just like that so what we're also going to do is we're going to get some soul sand and we're going to shove a block of soul sand in there and then we're going to put a block of glass which i've already got i don't know why i was going through my inventory like that in like that so what we can then do is we can put a water source block right there and that water source block will be quite happy and uh, sit there quite happily and not do anything we're then also going to get uh, some ice and you can use whatever ice you like. Blue ice works really well because it is the slippiest. And shove ice there. And that is that bit set up very nicely. Then come up to the top. You could use any ice there, by the way. Just I like to use blue ice because it is effectively the slippiest one. So put a bucket of water there. That should run all the way along and stop at the ice. So you can see it's come in here. It stops at the ice, you've got a gap, but that gap has got a lot of momentum coming at it from this water here. So that is going to shove any block you, you basically drop in this water, is going to shoot across that ice and into the water elevator. And that's the idea. And then we're going to come back up 
through out here and we're going to get right to the top going through all this Chinese lantern malarkey and come here and put a bucket we basically want a strip of water source blocks running the entirety of this width so the best way to do that is a water there or ice there if you wish a gap of two a gap of two gap of two gap of two and then just put with one uh, water bucket one gap water bucket one gap water bucket one gap water bucket one gap water bucket that will give you water source all the way along that edge and as a result you will get water running all the way down but not into that trench and that is exactly what we're trying to achieve because then no matter which one of these cactuses look they're all grown up already all of them no matter which one of these cactuses you have that is going to plop itself right into that little channel there which will eventually find its way into this um, into this uh, bubble column so then you need to get your bubble column so as it's full of water water source block specifically so let's, let's just fill this up with no I'm going to fill this up with sand so go up one shove in some water go up one shove in some water go up one shove in some water and then shove your glass in there and shove in some water and we're going to carry on doing that as we go up but we're not going to go up any higher than that yet that is all we need what we are going to do is we're going to get our oak log again and we're going to do a trim of oak log so we've got two sections kind of started up quite nicely there we're now going to come across to the next section now the next section we need to build up a bit first because we basically need the floor of this one to be as high as the floor of this one nearly but we don't need all the gubbins and gizmos underneath so we need an equal distance floor which means that we need it three high off the ground so coming from each corner we're going to go three high and we're just going to fill it three high in each of these rectangles we're not going to fill in the middle at all, but just the rectangles entirely three high. Now, you don't have to fill it kind of solidly, but you just have to have your floor on this three high level. So I recommend if you wish, you can keep this entirely open. But if you do keep it open, make sure it's lit so we don't get any mobs spawning. So I'm going to be doing that and I'll be back when I have. So you've got two three high platforms that are now covered with uh, dirt. I've used dirt, you could actually use most blocks, but dirt specifically is what I've used here. I've lit them up underneath just to save them to lay a load of blocks. And now what I'm gonna do is, you've guessed it, I'm gonna make a three high wall that goes around both of them like this. I'll be back when it's finished. So now we've got all three modules of our multi-farm pretty much ready to start thinking about the slime block sweeper that is going to be passing across it. Now, we have to think about what blocks do not interact with a slime block, i.e. what won't be pushed, pulled, etc. And there are a number of blocks that qualify for that, actually, but the probably the cheapest and easiest one to get is leaves. Leaves are a non-interactive block which actually I only found out the other day so thanks to Draymer Smith Dreams for telling me that leaves are the ones that you want to be using she's absolutely right they work beautifully and as a result I'm very grateful because it's a darn sight cheaper than doing obsidian or even making a whole lot of furnaces they work absolutely brilliantly so we are now going to think right so the sweeper arm is going to be sweeping across from this side kind of across this way all the way across to this side here but at the ends of the sweeper arms we're not going to have slime blocks we're going to put just a block of stone and that block of stone will still pass through in exactly the same way as the slime blocks but it does mean that any blocks on the end of the stone or any blocks that only interact with the stone don't need to be non-slime block interacting blocks because it ain't sticky so as a result we don't need these end ones here to be non-interactive blocks we also don't need these end ones to be non-interactive blocks but we do oh yes we do we do need the ones that they're going to pass over here to be non-interactive blocks and just for the sake of it looking fairly complete i'm going to go from here so that is kind of the first non-interactive block now that is actually going to be the stone but i don't want 
kind of it swooping around with uh, glass and then starting with leaves. I just wanted the, the, the leaves to start there. So we're going to come across with leaves right the way across here. And we're also going to come with leaves right the way across here. We're going to duplicate that again here. Like that. And again, all the way down here. Level with that one. We're then going to come across and in exactly the same spot, we're going to put leaves come on too far. No, I haven't. Across here and here like that. Actually, I just realized we do need to put them in the middle of these two as well. Perfect. And similarly here, all the way along. Level with that one, not that one, because we're going to have a gap which hasn't got the sweeper arm coming along on it. And then again on here like this. That's brilliant. So that is where the sweeper arm is going to pass through the farm like that straight across straight across all of these leaves and also across the back end here as well so now we've got that platform all sorted with its edging of leaves we're going to get a blocker block now theoretically you could still use leaves but i want something that looks a little bit more substantial so we're going to go to the level that the sweeper is going to come along which is the level above the leaves and we're going to come out one two and three Let's get those out of the way. And then across this opening, we're just going to put two obsidian, just like that. And that creates our blocker. And then we're going to come all the way across to the other side. And exactly the same, right down the middle, we're going to have... It's there, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. We're going to come out three, get rid of those and have it too wide. Now that is all I'm going to do for that part at the moment because we can build up the rest of it in a bit. I'm not even going to build the sweeper arm yet. What we are going to do now is to start to build up the walls of these compartments. So I want to get some glass for walls because I want to be able to see inside them. And we're going to build up walls along this edge here. Right to the end and into the corners. We are not going to put walls here at the moment. I'm going to put a wall there with glass block because these middle walls here require leafage again, which I didn't do. So leaves all the way down the middle here. Don't know why I forgot those. So right across. Perfect. So then get yourself a water bucket. And I want you to put a, a row of water all the way along every other block like that along two sides of the build. So we can go there and that gives us an entire layer of infinite water source blocks. And not infinite water source blocks, an entire layer of water source blocks, I beg your pardon, on that one. And do exactly the same here. And there we go. We've got two layers of infinite, no, not infinite water source blocks. They are two layers of water source blocks that have created themselves as a result of infinite water source blocks. So that's what we're after. And then get yourself some kelp and plant the kelp in every single square along these two trays. I'll be back when I've done that. Okay, two trays full slight error in my instruction you need to leave not this glass edge but you need to leave along the leaf edge one block unplanted all the way along there you can see one block unplanted the same on the other side that's because we're not going to be able to achieve a full column of water with the kelp growing into this one because we need to make sure that the water doesn't fall out of the farm as the sweeper comes past it that's the idea anyway and then we are going to come up another two for the glass wall on either side. So I'm just gonna do one side for now to show you. So we come up too high like this. And then once we've done it too high, what I want you to do is leave a gap and then above the gap, bring round another row of leaves like this. That's perfect. So we've got a row of leaves on that side and then around the top of that leaves, put a row of glass exactly like this don't miss any gaps because that could be a bit disastrous all the way around 
and this is the beginnings of our kelp tank there we go so repeat that on the other side so we've got two slightly extended trays and we've got a blooming great big gap going all the way around now what we need to avoid is water falling down into this edge around here and the way we're going to do that is we're going to put a sign on all of these leaves yes you can put signs on leaves it is perfectly safe to do so so put signs on each and every one that sign there acts as a sign for this block as well so you can miss that around and keep coming all the way around like this and once you've done all of this tray do the other one as well and you are good to go so i will be back when i've completed that tray and extended these walls up another four blocks so you are at the top of these two kelp tanks and the gap between the middle i want you to join up those two there and then count with me so that's one there so that's that doesn't count as one this is one two three four five six seven and block that off like that and then come along to this next bit and go down one one two three four five six and seven block that off like that and then the next one you guessed it come down one one two three four five six seven and eight and block that out like that so what we also need to do is match these drops with these sides as well so they need to come out all the way to the drop and that needs to come out all the way to the drop like that match it on this side and on this one as well just one drop there we go so that's what we look we need there that's great and then we're going to come up on this bit here and we're going to raise this up one all the way around and then once we've raised it up one all the way around we are also going to make a platform now this doesn't have to be glass i'm just using glass because i'm in creative and i happen to have it in my hand but we wouldn't actually be using glass for this at the moment you could use a temporary block that is easy to mine and you want to make a platform that uh, basically brings out get yourself a wall there basically brings it along the entire length right the way to the end here so you're going to have the platform coming along so as it meets there and you are going to build out a wall in this direction so this entire chamber here is completely enclosed like that you get the idea so this is going to be a complete platform all the way across here and then with this platform build a wall across the back and bring this up one more block all the way around so you've got two really good looking temporary platforms i changed them to dirt so you can visualize them a little bit easier they should be seven across because this final wall here the one just outside this middle four channel that is not temporary that is a permanent row so keep that as glass so you've got seven across and then it spans the entirety of the width on both sides then come to this side here and what we're going to do here is we are going to build out a further channel that is one below this one so we're going to basically get a block of glass on the inside corner here so if you can see that block there block of glass there block of glass there and we're going to count with that one being one two three four five six seven then come down one and that being one two three four five six and then count out one is seven and then come down there one two three four five six and seven and leave that one open and then on the outside we've got to basically hem it in so we're going to come all the way around and out past the end once come down all the way around like that out past the end once and down and then to the end come out one put another one there and another one there and if you wish you can always shove one there as well and that is our exit channel for all of the kelp it is all going to come out of this side what i recommend is putting a second level of wall all the way around here 
and it just avoids any escapees that sometimes just want to try and jump out which is not something that you want that looks fabulous and then we can start to fill up the top of the water so we're going to fill up this one in exactly the same way we want each of these uh, blocks here to be a water source block so we're going to start with the corner leave a gap block leave a gap block you get the picture do that with every single one along there do it along there as well and then also put four water source blocks here one two three and four and they will run all the way down here and they will stop right at the edge there that's perfect we're not going to put any water in this one as yet because it's not quite ready we need to get a hopper and shove a block just underneath the hopper there just temporarily and come inside and put a hopper into that block and then get the block away now we can put a water source in this hole here that's beautiful that runs along comes around the corner shoves along and ends up on the hopper that is the entirety of that bit i'm just going to finish off this water and i'll be back in a moment so we have got our walls around the cactus area you can see what we've done here we need a slit all the way across on those um, leaves so we've got a bit like a post box sort of effect and they are edged around by glass you can connect those glass up there that's absolutely fine and also on this side as well connect up the glass that's absolutely fine but you do need that kind of two by two hole there for the sweeper to move across we're then going to come down and look at this um, water elevator we need to raise this water elevator up by 11 blocks with this one being one so a further 10 blocks so here one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten that is going to be the level the top level of water is going to be up there and then once we've done that so if you imagine we've got our our block like that we need to uh, basically build up another channel that then brings us along and creates an exit so this one being one two three four five six seven it then drops down one and it goes one two three four five six seven drops down one one two three whoops three four five six and seven and then finally drops down one which should be the block above the wall where you are and it comes out two three four five six seven and eight so eight is the last drop there and then we come along here and build up that completely remembering to fill it up with water one layer at a time so as we do get easy access to the water and I'll be back when I've completed that shoot. So we've got our tray coming up from that water elevator that comes down and down and down and down and down and on that last point there, right point right there, we shove in a temporary block, put the hopper into the temporary block and it sits there ready and waiting for it to do its work. Then all we need to do is just a couple of things, come up to this block just above where the water is bubbling, shove another water source block, that will put the um, all of the items going up to the top like this and that will flow the water all the way down over that hopper you can see there so everything will flow into the hopper and then what we need you to do is we need you to bring a little lid on that section there because what you'll find is items will come up that elevator at a rate of knots and they will pop out and end up all over the place if you're not careful so put a little block there that will stop them from flying all over the place and push them and channel them all the way down into the hopper which is what you want them to do so that is that section done that's looking all right now what we need to do is this section and this section before we do anything needs to have the mine carts added so i'm going to come in the mine carts i leave this till last simply because it gets a little bit tiresome on the old ears whilst you're trying to make it the the mine carts do make a little bit of noise so come onto this section here Come around this side here and you want to be pushing a minecart now you need to think about this fairly carefully because we're going to get two minecarts onto each circuit and we want to have the second minecart going off around about the time the first minecart is halfway so if i put that minecart on there and let that go off that's going to run off into the distance and come back and then run off 
and when it is back to us that is when it is halfway so there let's push that off there now so that is going off and they're around about halfway apart they theoretically shouldn't ever clash now it is true minecarts with uh, something in them do travel at a, dis a different velocity to those that have not got anything in them So there is a tiny risk that they could bump into each other, but actually the risk is so small I'm not remotely concerned about it. So what we're going to do is wait for that one cart to come out of the way that's going to go off and Run around the outside And when it gets about halfway, we're going to do the same thing again There give that a push and we have now got four hopper mine carts running around that circuit or both of those circuits and we shouldn't ever have to worry about them again so let's get our wood let's close off this area here now we've done the job and we can then also close in this area now we can do it in um, dirt if you wish it really doesn't matter what you do it in um, i'm just going to do it in dirt for the sake of it being a cheap block but we're going to carry on along this way fill it in we just need to remember that we are not going to be putting any uh, of the harvestable items on that block that's not what we're looking to do okay and now we're just going to bring up this up one more i am going to put uh yeah i am i am going to put this as wood rather than um rather than leaves simply because it finishes it off quite nicely and it is in line with the edge of the other block and then we're going to come along the other side and we're going to put wood just one high on that area right there. And then we're gonna go with more glass because we do love a bit of glass. And we're gonna come up to, we're gonna get our leaf block and we're gonna run a leaf block all the way along to the middle, but not this middle bit here. So only to that section. Then we're gonna leave this to open and we're gonna run a leaf block all the way along to the edge there. And then we're gonna bring our glass up like that. Same on this side, that's perfect. And then we are gonna fill in with glass here. That is brilliant. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna to start to build ourselves up a bit of a wall. We're gonna make this too high. That then puts it in line with this one here which is great. We're gonna cover that over and then we're gonna make this just a little bit higher than the others because bamboo grows fast and there is the danger that it can grow over the top. So we're gonna come up another eight blocks. That's pretty tall and we're gonna fill that wall up all the way around at that height. So I'll be back when I've done that. Three chambers looking good and complete, all right without the actual growth but the stuff grows so fast if we put it in now by the time we've finished it'll be so overgrown we won't know what to do with it so we're going to plant it up in a bit what we are going to do is shove a chest underneath this hopper just a single chest you're never going to need more than a single chest with this one no matter how much kelp you bring in you're always going to have a little single chest being absolutely plenty then working backwards we're going to shove a block there a block there then we're going to come across one two and three we're going to shove a powered rail there and a powered rail there. We're going to power that and power that. So that's what we're looking for there. We're going to bring in a rail there and a rail there. Come out two and then come back on yourself all the way to the edge of that. Put a rail there, rail there, rail there and a rail there. Shove a powered rail there and there. That's already powered by virtue of the lever that's underneath there because it's powered that which powers this so that's great and we can then put a rail there don't put um, a rail there yet because it's just going to do that strange curvy thing and that's not what we're after but what you do want to do is bring another block like that so that is the beginning of the delivery system for the kelp into the furnaces now the furnaces are going to need to um, have a hopper going into the top of them which means the furnace level is going to be one below this block so we can start to build up the furnaces here so one block past 
this gizmo here and we're going to put six furnaces in so that's one two three four five and six six furnaces that's perfect get another stone brick there and then put a hopper into the top of each of those furnaces like that then you also want to be coming behind and put in a hopper into the back of each of these furnaces as well because that is where we're going to be delivering the bamboo into the back of these furnaces then bring a block on there and a block up like that now that block is going to be the stopper block that's going to be the powered rail and this is going to be where we bring the rails across for the bamboo rail like that that can come down like that just to make it easy for ourselves get another lever where's the lever there it is shove a lever on there turn it on that turns on that powered rail right there and then what we can do is we can shove a rail there a rail there and a powered rail on the middle of that one that strains it up and when we can get that powered like that that's brilliant then bring in a powered rail there discard that and make that powered rail as well and then come across the hoppers with normal rails like that so this is the beginnings of the system that we're going to be using for delivery we then want to bring out a block at the end of that a block on next to that and a block there that is going to have a powered rail attached to it and that is going to have a lever attached to that with the powered rail on so what happened the uh Minecart will come in, it will come underneath this uh, chest, it will come around and across and it will deliver the kelp into these furnaces in this order. So straight across and then back again and we should be absolutely fine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring in a delivery system here. So I'm going to have a powered rail there, there and there and I'm going to power that by shoving a lever on the underside of that block close that off so that is now powered and then what we need to do is we need to run this so as it runs underneath this and this is the bamboo delivery system now we need the bamboo to be delivering decent quantities otherwise it's never going to reach all of these um, hoppers so we are going to come underneath here give ourselves a little bit of room and we're going to have this is whoops this is a powered rail take these out that's a normal rail that's like that yep that's a normal rail that's a normal rail and then we're going to get a detector rail that detector rail is going to sit right there whoops and then we're going to bring i'll replace that again in a minute a normal rail and then we're going to make whoops powered rail powered rail powered rail and that gives us the uh, power for it to get right across uh, with some speed to all of the furnaces and back again and it should distribute it relatively evenly let me just replace so now that log is back in place we are going to create the delay that causes the minecart to come along here pause for a little while gather loads more of the um, bamboo than it normally would if it were just going backwards and forwards and then go off and distribute the bamboo into the furnaces. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take a redstone dust there. We're going to take a repeater that is going to take that redstone dust signal there into this block. That is then going to go there, there and there. Get rid of that block. That's going to go in like that. That's going to go in there and that's going to go in like that so then we're going to set all of these repeaters to four and we can experiment a little bit with these repeaters we don't know that this is exactly the right amount because this is quite a long delay so we've got four eight twelve sixteen twenty twenty four twenty eight so very nearly three seconds worth of delay and that's a very very long delay in the eyes of these hopper minecarts so we're quite impressed with that delay that's going to be quite good then what we're going to do here is we are going to replicate this entire system on the other side so I'll be back when I've done that 
So we've got the second part in. Now this one is higher and it is also on the closest edge to the bamboo farm and not on the far edge, unlike that one there. So we've had to design ever so slightly differently this part of the rail. This still has the same delay in exactly the same method and the rail just kind of skirts round and across it as opposed to going uh, kind of past it in a different way. So that is how that section works. That just comes down a couple more times and then it comes across and goes back again. Exactly the same principle, no different whatsoever. So I'm just gonna go over this very, very quickly. I've not put that there, that's quite important. So we've got the chest, then the block, and you've got rails coming across down and down and then coming round and across those hoppers, of which there are six hoppers, to a powered rail with a block at the end and back over the hoppers. Now in the back, you've got two blocks there then you've got your six hoppers going to the back of the furnaces these hoppers oh these blocks here haven't been powered well spotted get those powered and that rail then comes around and down and into the hole and across picks up uh, the stuff from there as a result of this pulse being pulsed through and down and into that block powering that which then flicks it off again so that's how that collection system works. That's dead, dead easy. And then the only thing we've got left to do now, apart from plan it all up and get it going, is the collection system out of the furnaces. Now, this is relatively simple. All we're gonna do is we're gonna take out a row like this from underneath the furnaces. So we've got three blocks coming out the front of the furnaces, dead, dead simple. And then we're gonna get our first chest there and we're going to come in because we want to poke a hopper into that chest from that um, from that furnace there and then we're going to bring hoppers from every furnace coming across like that and then what we can do as many times as we want we can then come down and place ourselves more chests like that and if we want we could do another one like that and then all we need to do to make it work is to get behind it and shove a hopper going into the chest underneath that hopper there so like that and then like that and that is now a functional system fill in all these bits that you've just kicked about keep that as a stepped entrance cover that over and we have got access to our chests very easily like that. I'm gonna do the other side as well, and then we're gonna get doing the clever stuff. So the collection system is in. All we now need to do is physically put it on. You can see that works beautifully. That goes backwards and forwards. We like that. Then we can do the same for this system here by coming inside there, shoving the minecart in there. That will go round but won't come back because that is pausing, and then it will wait and come back after a short pause. That works nicely. We can do exactly the same test over here by shoving the minecart on there. That will go under there. It will wait, it will pause, and then it will come back after a short pause. That's beautiful. And then on this one, that will just go backwards and forwards like that. So that is working. Now we're gonna do the slime bit. This is the bit that's a little bit clever. So with this is, the center or the central area and we are going to put slime that goes all the way across to this mark literally it's going to come right to the wall but it's not going to be the slime that hits the wall it's going to be a secondary block that is stuck to the slime so if you can imagine we're going to have slime coming all the way across from here but then when we get to here it's not going to be a slime it's going to be a normal block now we know that this block is one two three out so this is the level we want so one two three so we're going to go one two three out and we're going to have our stone brick there and we're going to come in across to the middle right there and then we're going to come and we're going to shove one two three four five six seven eight nine we're going to shove a slime there and then we can come 
needs just to get ourselves a bit of room. A slime there. Get rid of that. Shove a sticky piston there. Replace your leaf blocks. And then come along the same way. Put a sticky piston right there. And get slime blocks. One, two, three, four, five. And we're coming not to this end bit, but this is the final block right here. And this final block is just one out. So we have that there and that there like that. And shove that there like that. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And similarly here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. That is the maximum that the sweeper can operate at. It couldn't do any wider. That is your lot, mate. And then get a slime block. This is a temporary block. I'm using slime because it's dead easy to mine away. And shove two slime blocks in there. Take out those two. Find yourself an observer and get an observer and point it, if you can drive, straight up into that block and straight up into that block. Do not remove these blocks just yet. And then we need to set up what's effectively the, the system that's going to bring it backwards and forwards. And I'm going to do that now. So we're going to use the instant return system because it is such a long sweep it actually takes long enough to go backwards and forwards for you to not have to put any delay on it. So we don't need an etho hopper clock or anything like that at all. We're going to use this system that was introduced to me by Buster the Fox when I did my sweeper mob farm. And it is dead, dead simple. What happens is the sweeper comes in and when it hits the face of this observer, that sends an update pulse and you get a little redstone fart come out of its little redstone bum that puts redstone signal into that repeater that puts some signal into the block which lights up that redstone which powers this block which allows this repeater to suck the signal out which flips up that trap door which has the uh, observer on the flying machine facing up underneath it that counts as a block update and it fires the piston and off it goes back again all by fart power absolutely amazing now i'm not done at the other end of it yet because once i uh, get that one going up the other end that's going to set the system off so what we're going to do first is we are going to prime the lot we're going to take out all of this dirt here these temporary blocks whatever it was you used as a temporary block this is what we're taking out now and we're going to get rid of all of that and that will drop water columns all the way down onto the kelp at the bottom which is brilliant that's what we're really looking forward to and then the kelp will start to grow and then we're going to plant up the bamboo and once the bamboo is planted up we will get this system rolling and we'll demonstrate it to see how well it's going to work i wouldn't say it's necessarily industrial scale but it's pretty close it is a triple farm with fairly significant capacity that uses a single sweeper to power all three farms you're going to get xp out of it you're going to get cactus green dye out of it you're going to get kelp out of it you're going to use bamboo for your infinite fuel it works rather well so i'm just going to finish off doing this so we have got an active farm. You can see the sweeper is banging across there very nicely. Please do note that this is gonna cause a lot of entity change, which means that you're gonna get a bit of lag. It is just the way it is, but it still functions perfectly fine. You'll notice you get a little bit of visual lag as that uh, piston runs across there, but the system still works. All of the bamboo gets cut down. All of the kelp gets cut down. All of the um, cactus gets cut down and the runners keep on running. So if I just come in here, we'll see that we've got cactus green already coming out. And on the other end, we shall see that we have got dried kelp coming out of the other end. So that is an effective farm. It is being fueled entirely by the bamboo. You don't have to do anything. You can go away. If you did this in the spawn chunks, you might find you're a bit laggy, but if you don't do it in the spawn chunks, you'll find that it works beautifully and you'll have an infinite source of all of this stuff. And more specifically, when you fill it all up and the um, furnaces get filled, as a result of all of that work they've done, you can end up with loads of XP. It's a brilliant system. So you've got one infinitely powered multiple sweeper farm for bamboo to fuel it, kelp and cactus to be fueled by and you get 
a lot of XP once it fills up and it doesn't take that long to fill up. I reckon one overnight AFK session would fill all of these um, chests max out the uh, furnaces completely so you can take stuff out of them alternatively you could put a little locking mechanism on the furnaces so things don't leave them and you can just take the goods out and away you go loads of xp but also loads of cactus green loads of dry kelp entirely fueled by the bamboo it's a bit of fun this may not be the most effective farm you've ever seen but by goodness it is a lot of fun to watch and see working i like it very much if you've enjoyed the video, please do remember to slab that like button. It'd be great to know you're enjoying it, and I'll keep on making these daft videos. Also, if you've not done it already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in the sub club. I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.